Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of The Aftermath. My name is Ian and we're all here today. Dylan, Ethan, and myself. And it is I. The not so big three. Woo. As we haven't even started yet and you're already yawning. Woo. Don't do that. You're going to let it freaking spoil my yeah. buzz. Ooh, look at that. <laughs> Ethan's in the corner yawning today. Wow, thanks. Um, but as we had promised a couple episodes back, we have a few movies that we're going to watch. Um... And uh, two of the three that we had talked about, uh, Ethan wanted to be present for them because, again, one of them he hasn't even seen, and the other one was technically his movie that he owned, um, which is the one we're talking about today, which yeah. is The Breakfast Club. Breakfast. It's mine now. <laughs> yeah, no, it's still mine. It's just going in your collection. I'm joking. I, yes, I've left it in the care of Dylan's. Care of God Dylan. Care of Dylan. Have. The cultured one, Dylan. Uh, Please don't call one me who that. Has I the, do not want to I've be. Been, I do not want to be part of that part because, of my reputation. Because because the whole theme of this show is the fact that me and Ian haven't seen these shows, and I was always called uncultured. So that means, therefore, that if every time I'm like, hey, Dylan, have you seen this movie? He's like, oh, of course, it's a good movie. That makes Dylan, therefore, the cultured one. I make no such out of Out of the group, out of us three here on the podcast, he is the one that has seen the most. Not saying out of the whole world, because there's a large I definitely texted stuff. someone and said, <laughs> Dylan, the cultured one, who's seen all movies. Yes. So I actually, the I, I gave one. a higher promise then than I am now. But uh, I can see him rubbing his brow disappointedly. Yes. He hasn't seen all movies. Most of them. Just a lot of them. A good few. Just almost all of them. Not enough. Like 98.7%. Is there any anything else you guys want to talk about before we get jumping right into this episode? Oh, I'm sad. What for? What? No, let's just keep going. It was just, it was just a sad <laughs> nope, movie. just in general, I'm just a sad guy. We're just no. going to yeah. Yeah, keep going. Move right back. Is there anything you want to talk about from... Mr. Night Shift. <laughs> Mr. Night Shift. Night Shift suck. That's what. Yeah. That's we're all. actually recording this episode on a different time schedule yeah, because I, his night shift is going to be screwing up all the normal stuff. Yeah. It's been horrific. I've, I've worked eight days in a row on Night Shift. Turns out Night Shift suck and uh, don't like it. Not a big fan, but you know, um, whatever. My finals are tomorrow <laughs> and here I am definitely studying. Um <laughs> and not watching movies and not watching the Breakfast Club and then talking about it on the <laughs> podcast afterward. <laughs> you know, By finals. You mean final moments? Yes, I am spending actually, your time wisely. Yeah, I'm spending my time wisely yes. before I, you know, uh, die. I guess I don't know. Also, I don't think we actually talked I don't know about what else final moments could mean, Sean. Well, <laughs> I, I, mean, I don't know if you're killing me or if I'm dying. I don't know what. Oh, you'll die. <laughs> might not be me. Or it might be. Police, that's him. That's the guy. If I go missing. They can't I, stop me. I, uh, they, that's how they can. I don't think we talked about this on the last episode, Dylan, that we were on, but we have a little setup um, that, like, it's a more of a stationary setting. Now that we've gotten Dylan moved in. It's rather cuboid. And the, the house is all kind of set up, and our living room's kind of in a wreck. We kind of have, like, sectioned off a, a portion of our we living room. We have constructed a room. Yes. We it's like a, a Lego set. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We just built it out of Lego bricks, and it's a yeah. nice little room. We actually have a, like a Lego brick home inside our house that we, bless you, that we, um, <laughs> <laughs> that we... Sneezing? Mm, I was a sneeze, totally a sneeze. They've yeah. constructed in our house Legos. Speaking yeah, of Legos, actually, we, uh, me and Dylan created our first Lego set in probably 10 years for me. I um, reveled in yeah, how much fun it was. It was, was. It was just I a, forgot how much <clears throat> I fucking loved Legos. Dude, yeah. It was just a Lego Master Chief from Halo. It was a really good, um, really good set. Really fun. Uh, yeah. Reject modernity. It looked really Return nice. Return to Lego. Return to <laughs> Lego. <laughs> well, he also did edit it a little bit. So after it was done and created, he used some of his creative prowess. I just put some extra armor on the dude. Yeah. yeah. Like a madman. He also he has created a full-sized assault rifle, apparently, from scratch, <laughs> out of Legos. That was a long time ago. It was like a multicolored piece of shit because I didn't have enough bricks of the same color. Oh, but yeah. The, but, the impressive, but the impressive part is he still did it from memory. He's played enough Halo and knows what that rifle looks like enough that he just, even though it was multicolored, probably did look like Shaz. Doesn't matter. From memory, he created this. <laughs> I mean, it's just a, it's a simple shape. Yeah, you it know. Is, it is the shape of it's gun. A, it's a simple shape as you pull it out, and you're like, it can also fire fully automatic <laughs> rounds. Like, oh, yeah, it's, <laughs> it's a simple thing, totally capable uh, of firing rounds. Like, yes. like, it's still impressive. In fact, watch what you say. <laughs> yes. He's got the gat. That is what it is. So, anyways, to, continue with, what, to continue with what I was saying, we have this nice little setup on our, in our living room, and... Uh, it's 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 nice and cozy. It's it makes it, it makes the podcast it feels better to do, uh, because of the 
the setting, the room. And I, I was always told from, again, people that are way smarter than I am, separate like the things in your life that you do by like spaces. So like have a place to do work, have a place to sleep, have a place to exercise and to do like certain types of work because it helps with like, I guess, um, transitioning between different things and stuff. And I feel like this is, this helps with this. And if we sit here, obviously this is a comfortable spot we hang out with, at most of the time, but this also, uh, Feels real nice. Yes, the big cube. Ah, yes, cuboid. Anyways, let's get let's get cracking on. Uh, oh God, cracking on the on the on the movie, dude. So oh, I've been wanting to talk a, to you a, about this movie for God knows how long now. As a start, uh, Dylan, before the movie uh, started, I said, Dylan, quick before the podcast starts, I want to know how would you describe Breakfast Club in three words? What did you say? I said fucking radical, dude. I said fine. That doesn't count. One word. What'd you say? Fucking. <laughs> And here we are. <laughs> <laughs> that is all. <laughs> oh, all right. So, so let's let's start with you. You've, you said you've been wanting to talk with us about this with someone for a while. So I want to hear. It's a good movie, and I like it. Awesome. Right. That's, I, you've been I, wanting to say that for. So <laughs> I I will say after watching the whole movie, what I thought about after the fact once it was done was, um, I wanted more. Right? There was a point, right? like yeah. at the end of the movie, I was like, "Oh wait, this is the wrap up. This is the end of the movie." Yeah. And I was like, "And again, it came to a really nice conclusion, nice final chapter." And yep. I really, I really enjoyed that, and I thought it did a really good job of wrapping it up. But then I was like, "Oh man, like that's wait, no, but I want to know what they do in the club." Yeah, <laughs> it's yeah. it's short. It feels short and sweet, but yeah. like it's all confined to a small cast. On a small setting, mm-hmm. like it, it feels. I think more movies should do what they've done. Yeah, because it, it, it's not only is it, it's they instead of having like a million characters and having a bunch of different sets and different areas and doing all this yeah. effort, they put their effort into having good characters with good stories that are well acted. Yes. very well acted. Yes, and each character has a story that you don't even hear all of, really, mm-hmm. but you're still invested in the story that you yeah. do hear. And it's like, instead of putting a lot, they didn't go over the top with it. They, they just gave, you. They gave you good stuff. They yeah. didn't give you a lot. They gave you good shit, though. <laughs> like oh, yeah. that's really whenever, what it is. when like whenever you whenever I thought about it as the movie was coming to a close, I was like, you have the outside scene, you have the big like hall that are always in the big the auditorium movie, the big auditorium yeah. area the library i think is something mm-hmm. like that. Mm-hmm. yeah the library and then they have a couple of hall scenes yeah and then the vents <laughs> yeah well, <laughs> pretty yeah. much it well, yeah, but, yeah. but i was like all like th- like it's very confined to the school and that's about it like they don't ever cut away to something outside of the school mm-hmm. there's and no real course, cuts just like transitions you, to like, other like, parts like of i the feel school. like i feel like you have like three of the parents you have you them, see their face you have the main you have the main cast of the um, the club, the, like the five, like the club themselves, the teacher and the janitor. So they like the whole cast is like less than ten people, and I was like, man, and they do a good job. Yeah, it's perfect. Yeah, yeah. it's well done. Yeah, I think the the like the first thing that I really like noticed about it that like I enjoyed, even just like like a quarter of the width of the movie was like, yeah, every character was like like a real person. Mm-hmm. Like every character seemed like a real character yeah. that was like real. Everyone had a backstory. I like how. Uh, the um, what was his name again? The guy who's picking on everybody, the guy with the weed. <laughs> John. Oh, Bender. Bender, that was it. I'm not yeah. really good with the names in the show. I just never was. I don't know. Show yeah. names, I'm hard to. So Bender, I like how slowly throughout the show he just kind of realizes, and you can see his facial expression change from where he is in the beginning to the end, where he's like, "My God, I'm really not as messed up as I thought." Because he's uh-huh. like, "These people, <laughs> these people in this in this detention are so messed up," and he's like, "God, I thought I had it bad," yeah. and like his face just shows it along the way, which is another part of that really good acting. That they One had. thing that I thought about halfway through this movie was, I was like, "Are we gonna just keep watching '80s movies?" Please, we have to. I was gonna say, so are far, they gonna be that good? Because that was so really far, good. That was all the movies that we've ever talked about, barring. Last episode, where we talked about Kong Skull Island, excuse me, <laughs> <laughs> or have all been 80s movies, RoboCop, Terminator, uh, Breakfast Club. It was one of the best oh, times. Wasn't there another one? They don't make movies like that anymore, apparently. Oh, definitely not. Wasn't it no, exactly really 84, 84 that's considered a good year? Exa- is that the year? Nineteen eighty. A lot of good stuff. In 84? That's what I heard, that 84 was like the like the best. I had to look mm-hmm. it up again. No. Probably so. I believe it. So who is everyone's favorite character? I'm torn oh, between two. Oh, man. Uh, maybe 
maybe three, but I'm torn between two of the main cast. Dylan, who do you think? Who do you think is your favorite? You don't have to have a commitment yet. Give me Bender. a gimmick. Bender, Bender. Yeah, he's the guy that he's. That, that guy's so he, funny, man. I love he him. initiates. He initiates all of the strife and gets everyone mm. talking and out of their bubble, mm-hmm. and then you know brings it all full circle. Not to end. mention coolest cat in town. Yeah. Dude, yeah. The guy. Shoves marijuana in dude's pants. Yeah. Not mention, by the way. And he's like, Spoilers. Pink, pink. <laughs> Lights he's cigarettes like, with his shoe fire. Yeah. He's Spoilers. Like, for, right? He's caught his boot on fire and w- he so he used a like a lighter to yes. catch his boot on fire. A match. So that he the could... 80s. <laughs> sorry. Whatever. <laughs> they have they had lighters there too, right? I know, right? I know. But. So they used a match <laughs> to light his boot on fire so that he could light his cigarette instead of using the match to light his cigarette. Why? Because he's cool. Because he's okay? cool. Oh, and that's why. All right? I love him. I think for better hallway was, vision. For better hallway vision. <laughs> sunglasses. <laughs> because of the sunglasses. Man. Um, I think mine's probably between the nerdy guy with that green sh- green shirt <laughs> yeah. and probably the uh, the emo girl. Brian. Uh, dude, she's the best. Emo girl's probably one of my she favorite. I, my favorite scene in the movie out. is whenever they're like, fi- Bender and the jock guy are like fighting and he just like stabs his knife on the table and you see her hands <laughs> <laughs> just go across yeah. the screen and just her, take hey, the knife. Her, her uh-huh. head too. Her head, shoulders, and one hand reaches out, grabs it, can't get it. Second hand comes <laughs> in and then yanks it out of oh, the I, chair. I, for me, I just saw both hands come out and do... And then just take the knife back. And I was like, a woman after my own heart. What a kleptomaniac. I love it. (laughs) Yeah, she kind of gave me the, like, the, I love a weird feeling at at the top. But then as her character kind of flourished and bloomed out, you're like, oh, I see. You're, you're really cool. From the beginning. Uh I was like, I was like, it's weird, but it must be a facade. She's got to be so cool. I love her. And then, of course, at the end of the movie, I was like, amazing. So So a few, a few notes that I have written down was like, there's a point where you realize, like they're unlikely allies, like they all kind of have a common goal. There's yeah. a point where, like, very you can early on, you yeah. can realize that they're all at school and don't like the teacher. They may have they may all hate each other and right. they may be at each other's necks. But the second the teacher comes in, is like, what the hell's going on? Everyone's like, I don't know, nothing. I don't. Know. I loved it, even though everyone literally oh, yeah, yeah. got finished hating each other. And he's like, "Where's the screw?" And they're like, "Screws falling all the time." Know. And everyone's like, "What are you talking it's about?" It's an imperfect world. An Im- <laughs> that was an amazing line. It's an imperfect world, sir. It just the things happen. Things just happen. Teacher's screws, d- screws shit, are falling dude. out all the time, Ooh. dude. Yeah. That leads that- to my next point, though. Uh, of the main cast, I'm torn between the the two that I mentioned. Yeah, but Carl is also probably my favorite person because <laughs> he's just yeah. like pay me and I won't talk about it. They drinks with him and he's like, God, just a dumbass teacher. And I'm like, yeah. yes, Carl. Yeah. Yes. There's oh. like that one. I, I, again, we're kind of bouncing all over the place, which kind of, I didn't mm. want it. But anyways, there's the point where the teacher gets all up in Bender's face. And I was like, man, you can re- like the subtext on Bender's mm. face. I was like, wow. Yeah. He was like, he goes from being real hard to all of a sudden he's like, what is this guy doing? He's yeah. crazy. He's threatening He's like, me. wow, he's this like, guy's actually me. like, yeah. He's lost his mind. Um, yeah. Again, uh, Ethan's already kind of touched on it a little bit, but like the emotions felt real. Like mm-hmm. the situations yeah. felt real, the yeah. characters felt real, but the, It'll um, hit you. the emotions that each character had felt like it made the character like this whole character arc that you're not seeing behind the scenes every, or whatever. Yeah, every character had a, a story and had yeah. uh, emotions and had something. None of them were perfect. None of them felt like a, a Mary Sue character, which, you know, in every movie nowadays, I feel like there's just one character that I'm like, oh, yeah, I'm, they're not going to die, right? Yeah. Like, no spoilers, but for, like, even for, like, Game of Thrones, there was there was two characters that I was like, they're they're not. They're, they are going to make it to the end, and I... They did. I knew they would. Even if those bumps along the way, it was just like they're just they're not going to. Yeah. And even though I love Game of Thrones, that's just the case. I just knew there would be characters that would make it to the end, even though everyone's gonna die. Game of Thrones isn't a good example of it necessarily, but still. So yeah. for this one, it was that. But like, it was the it was this this thing where there was no character that was like perfect. That I that I was like, oh, this character is mm-hmm. gonna get the way they yeah. want it, or this. Ca- I was even like, the, all of them are gonna get something out of this because they all ha- are imperfect and have their story. Even the know? ones where you thought that they have. Mm-hmm. Like Claire, for instance, she's like the the stereotypical Miss pop- Popular, Miss Popular queen pretty, of the school. Yes, exactly. And again, not like you ever think like, oh, she's perfect. But again, if there ever was a character that you think like, oh, there's probably one character that, that in this movie archetype doesn't have a flaw. There's even points where like she really breaks down and, and is like, oh, yeah. dude, some of the things that Bender said whenever he was like, you know, he was digging into her. And like she got like real, there was a point where it, like it got real. There's mm-hmm. some like, I just looked up the cast today and look at John Bender. 
Oh my gosh. What? He'd got like a beard. John Bender looks what insane. The fuck? He looks totally different. It's been like so many years, <laughs> oh, but still, oh, yeah. let me just see For this. For sure. Yeah. He, he has, okay, so to describe it, he has a salt and pepper beard and glasses. Oh, yeah, yeah, He yeah. went from John Bender, like the badass of the school, to like John Bender, like the old wow. wise man. <laughs> like, <laughs> wow. That's yeah, that. Wild. Oh my gosh, they all look so yeah. different. <laughs> I'm going to show yeah. Oh man. For those of you watching, look up the cast of the Breakfast Club now. Yes. Yeah, they all look I mean, some of them look actually very similar. Yeah. Honestly, but the re- but most of them look totally different. Yeah. yeah. But anyways, there there's a specific moment where they get like through that they're, they're like going through the hardship of like really digging into each other and like right. kind of airing all their grievances and talking about their characters as a whole. And again, I have it written down here as like monologues, period. Yeah. As an actor, there are so many points where like there are so many good monologues in that one scene where they're all on like the upper balcony area. Yeah. They've all smoked the weed or whatever and everything's they <laughs> smoked <all> smoked <laughs> the Mary the, Yeah. And so they're all like kind of coming off that and they're all like getting real with each other. Uh-huh. There's a each character has that moment where they really start to dig into who they are. Mm-hmm. And there are some things that characters say to each other about each other. They kind were of like good. They kind were of solid like solid lines. Kind of digging in to the other characters and like you can tell again it's obviously we've said this before it's well acted so there's mm-hmm. points where like characters are kind of just like digging in and being aggressive and being like you know judgmental on purpose and the characters react in such a way that's like it feels visceral and you're yeah. like and like there was a point where I even in the moment was like whoa buddy yeah oh wow that hurt mm-hmm. even I, I don't even have a situation like that yeah. and it was when Bender like looked at her and was like Go and cry back to your dad and your drunk mom and all I that like kind it. of stuff. You're a rich drunk mom in the Bahamas. And I was like, yeah. Oh, yeah. Like, got him. Oh, dang. It just yeah. like, it, it just hits different. Yeah. That was, and they did a really good job at delivering like the, the, the perfect transition of like cutting that tension. It was so funny to me actually because it felt so harsh, which I know it was like intentionally harsh. Yeah. yeah. But it was like, oh yeah, all big sad. And then once they all like got to the point where they like kind of finished what they were monologuing about and like they're they're still they're not mad at each other anymore but there's still tension between all of yeah. them it cut straight to like dance party <laughs> like wait <laughs> yeah. what <laughs> and they're oh, all yeah. like dancing and jiving now I was like uh, right. yeah I'm, I'm not even talking about that i'm talking about like in the moment where like there's parts they where they laughing afterwards yeah well I'm, I'm i'm even just talking about the i can't remember her name the kind of emo girl allison the allison the allison character there's points where she interjects and kind of kills the tension, mm-hmm. but but does it in a way that feels natural, and and, yeah. it, and it keeps it keeps doing that. The emotions get they they raise, and then someone either says something or does something, and kind of like everyone kind of chills back out and realizes like, okay, we're all on the same page here. We're my all f- stuck here. My favorite part of that scene when they're all sitting around is as well that like the characters they all kind of come alive a little bit more because, like, yeah. uh, you know, Allison says so many things that you're like, there's no way yeah. that's true, right? And then she's like, I'm yeah. also a compulsive liar. And you're like, ah, like got oh, him, okay. right? But got then, and like, so her character kind of comes alive and you already understand what, what's going on with her now. Yeah. Her story is, and then as if you already couldn't kind of figure out what Brian, the guy with the green shirts, s- story was, right? Like he's supposed to be the perfect kid or whatever. You know, he... Straight A's. He, yeah, he's supposed to be the straight A case. He's supposed to be perfect. dream. Right, that was funny, you know. It's like <laughs> as if you couldn't already kind of figure out his story. He comes in and Claire says something, and he, he's like, and he starts laughing while crying. It's like, God, why are you so conceited, Claire? And I was like, Oh my god, did he just yeah. say that? The guy <laughs> who would never insult anyone, and he was just like, F you. And I was like, This dude just pop. it was my favorite scene because that character yeah. really came well, alive. He was finally over it, and yeah. it just felt real. But it also, and then again, it's because those situations felt relatable, yeah. And there's moments where Claire starts talking about how you don't understand. Yeah. You don't understand what it's like to have my friends that have an expectation. And that's when he just pops off. And he's like, mm-hmm. you don't think I understand having friends and having a family that has expectations of me? Right. And that's when he kind of goes into his monologue about like, do you even know why I'm here? And it's like, yeah. oh, here we go. <laughs> rut row. Yeah, yeah, rut row. <laughs> do you? <laughs> it, was, yeah, yeah. it was just, it was well made. So, I really enjoyed it. I think do you have any, uh, any bits to add? Still a good movie, and I still like it. Yeah, it's a yeah. great movie. Great movie. So, who's your favorite character? Ian? My favorite character? Yeah, one or two. Oh man, because I, I I can't say just one because I'm stuck on two. So I I, I gotta give you Each, <laughs> I gotta give you guys the option to say one or two. I hold a special special place in my heart for Bender. I can tell that the movie kind of made him like 
the main protagonist and yeah. antagonist all at the same way. time. Yeah, yeah. It, made, it made it gave him a sp- kind of a special spot to start everything. Yeah, exactly. Like I said at the top, it's like he kind of came in shoving stuff off the desk mm-hmm. and causing a ruckus <laughs> and I then and just <laughs> cracking jokes that are about to falling off the hook. Yeah. It kind of makes you think like if he wasn't there doing all that, like yeah. would it be the same way? Right, yeah. You know, and it's well, like, oh, one wow. of my favorite lines is when they're talking about how like, she's like, oh, I get dehydrated very easily. And <laughs> I'm very susceptible to, be, and to then, dehydration. And the other guy's like, I've seen it before. It's pretty gross. Yeah. <laughs> I, <love Yeah>. that. <laughs> I was like, yes, yes, it is. <laughs> oh, oh, man. There's just so many little things. So that, many solid lines. Yeah. And of course, also like the whole movie you know, of course, obviously, it's made in the '80s, and so the, it just has it's a this masterpiece. It has yeah. this look about it that just. But like the thing is, they could totally still do something like now with stuff like that. Yeah, but they but, won't. And they, they won't. No, they no. won't. But what I'm saying is, like the the issue is like as well because it's so simplistic. Like it being in the '80s is such a good part of it because like yeah, it's like classic and old school, and it's like mm-hmm. really yeah. fun. But also, it's like we could totally do something now with stuff like that, and it would still kind of work. They could still make that work. Yeah, but they totally like, just seen. Won't, you know, it's I've like, seen movies that are like Amazon exclu- no, no, not Amazon. Um, like Netflix exclusives. I can't remember what the name of the movie was, but there's a few movies that I've seen like that that are small cast, yeah. uh, small setting, and just focus on the story, and it makes a really big difference. And I, and I feel like there are probably more out there. I just don't know them. And if anybody knows any of those, please let me know because I love that. Recommend them because that's the entire yes. point of what this is about. Exactly. Welcome to the party. But yeah, you're right, though. There is a certain kind of like patina about that sort of movie. They're like Again, not only is it like short, sweet, concise in its own little universe, but it also has that feeling of like this is obviously the eighties. It has, and it has yeah. that and the thing is it has like a realistic vibe so that it doesn't need any explaining. Yeah. Because it it's so well done that you don't need to explain what's kinda going on at all because yeah. it, it's it's realistic. All the characters feel real, everything feels real and they're just in a school so it doesn't need, they don't need any preface to why everybody, that's why I, I like at the top of the movie, I was like, so before I say anything, like Dylan, it gets explained why they're all in detention, right? Because th- three of the people seem like they shouldn't, three of them at least seem like they shouldn't be in detention. Yeah, yeah. And I was <laughs> like, so I was like, it gets explained, right? And he's like, we'll get to that. Okay, I figured, yeah, right? Movie. Yeah, that's exactly. kind of the whole premise like, of the movie. I was like, okay, that's what I was, I was making sure. Because I, I didn't know if I wanted, again, it's one of those things where like, maybe I zone out very early on and I thought I might have missed something because that could have happened. So I was like, it gets explained, right? And he's like, yeah, we're at the beginning. Okay. <laughs> but it doesn't need to be, like, that. you can go into this movie. Nothing needs to be explained. No. Because yeah. it, it's just, again, all these people like, wow, this is a kind of a motley crew to have in detention. Hmm, weird. Yeah. I wonder what that means, but still believable because all these people are, and it just, you, you just get kind of hooked in. And they could, it, yeah. it doesn't need anything fancy. No preface. Not long. It's an hour and a half long. Doesn't need to be longer than that. Like, you yeah. can just have they, this thing, and you can just believe that this happened somewhere in real life. Because for God, we may have right. <laughs> right? This exact then, thing might have happened. And somewhere. I always, I always forget. And I had had a conversation with some friends of mine about this before. Was you also forget how far technology has come in the past, like ten years, even five years. But especially when you think about ten years from two thousand ten, or even twenty years from two thousand, how far technology has come. So again, you're firmly planted in the mid '80s, where cell phones aren't a thing really, or if they are, they're very, they're not very portable at all. No. And so it's like you also realize that in this moment of like you you see the school and you see the kids and you and I've seen movies like this before. So again, it's not like it's out of the normal to like look at these kids and go like, oh, okay, this is very strange for a high school. But then you look at it and how would you say that? You look, I look at it with eyes today going, how would a movie like that look today with like smartphones and kids having, it's it's getting know. to the point where you can consider it a period piece. You kind of can. And, that, and that's what I was like, saying. I mean, barely, at some, course, at some point in the movie I uttered while they, while he was like, <laughs> while Bender was just like throwing shit off a counter yeah. or something. I, I, I uttered <laughs> the as words he, as he did the entire movie <laughs> 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 at one of the points that he did this, one of the many mind you points that he did this. Yes. I, I uttered the words back when you could do anything and there was no security cameras, right? Because that's the thing is now yeah. now schools watch you like a hawk. I mean, that's not like it's a good or a bad thing, but a student can't just vandalize things for the sake of it. And if they do, it has to be such an intricate plan for the smallest thing. Yeah. Now, spray painting a dick on something 
is like impossible. And if a you get criminal it, offense. It, and if you, it's like impossible. And if you get away with it, you're like the king of the school. But it's also a criminal guy, offense and you get fined or something. This guy, and this dude's literally on the way out. He just like shoves a printer off the desk and you hear it. <laughs> you he audibly Viscerally. hear it break. Yeah. And the teacher's just like, what a bastard. <laughs> like, that's, yeah. that's, I was going to say, uh, this, guy has a, this guy has a whole, he has a, a crap ton of weed in his locker <laughs> inside three different bags. With a guillotine then, in his say, locker. I was gonna say, <laughs> and then to get to it, you have to pass a freaking booby trap. Like, right. that ain't happening. Right. So it's There's just at least nine OSHA violations in his locker. <laughs> yeah. Like, how did he even get that? It's but the then 80s. again, this is also coming from a guy who I have never really been to, like, a public school yeah. like that before. So not only am I so detached from high school already, but it's also, like, I never really was in that to begin with. So it's like, I am so far removed from what is like normal to some degree, but it's like, I want to start thinking about doing something like that. It's like, Oh, that's yeah. Nowadays it would look very different. Yeah. It's gotten to the point where now I did say that we could make like this movie would be believable if it was made today. But the only issue I have with it is though it, it could still be totally believable and well done. The big issue with this movie is that like it, it would it would be borderline considered fiction if we did it today yeah. because the things they get away with would be impossible today, uh-huh. right? The things that a kid could get away with back in the 80s. <laughs> they freaking hotbox the... They hotboxed the, the... What was the room again? The, the foreign language room or whatever? Yeah, and the dude oh comes gosh. out and it's just like... He was it had a mojo. Okay, could not have been marijuana. He was so hyped dude, up. <laughs> he did. He like, also did some extra stuff. Right. He also sorted a line while some, he was in he there. He popped some molly. He ripped a line. Because <laughs> that dude was doing flips. He was doing... Car wheels. Mm-hmm. So, and Dodge it's like, rolls. it makes me kind of sad because it's like, yeah, man, like, now, you know, like, that's something that I could say ha- goodbye he- to that era. Again, I wasn't public schooled either, so I can't really say much about that. But even if I was public schooled, I was born in a time that I never could have experienced what some of the fun stuff that you did. Like, just hearing my parents talk about their high school experience was hilarious. Some of the stuff. Oh, they yeah. Did. And they don't even well, tell me these stories. They don't even tell me that much. They, they're trying not to. I'm like, Mom, I'm a grown-up now. Tell me, what, how crazy was it? <laughs> yeah, I can't remember when, when Mom and Dad graduated high school, but I want to say they graduated in 80s. I want to I say, Dad, didn't he say he graduated in 86? Yeah, we were talking about someone that I worked with, and he was saying that like they were born whenever he graduated high school, which was like 87. Jeez. Well, yeah, you know, and I think so he said 83. That's I a think. prime example. Like that, I don't know. That could have been Dad. Like, yeah. And that's crazy to think about. Oh, that. I was my like, God. Do you think my dad was Ben? Do <laughs> <laughs> you think... I think my dad was not. We already know, know that, that we already know that me and my dad were the exact same height, shape, and size in high school. We know <laughs> yeah. that I fit his jacket from when he first worked at Acadian whenever he was eighteen and I, whenever I was eighteen. Yeah, yeah. So I know we were the That's same great. height, shape, and size. He could have been Bender in high school. That's all I'm saying. That's dad, crazy. Dad hit me up if you were Bender. <laughs> 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 I mean, from what I can tell, Dad did have a I think a, a black Mustang. Yeah, no, he standard was a cool transition. kid. He was yeah. a cool kid. He had, yeah, he had a, a standard. You want to know something crazy? A, yeah. Is that he got rid of it whenever I was born? That's ass, yeah. dude. That's because I was. What the fuck? I, and, and I was like, man. All I'm saying is, I could have made it work, Dad. Why'd you have to do that? I mean, well, <laughs> you know, he was a good dad. Yeah. No, I, I mean, yeah, it. I get it, but like, it's, it's still a cool car. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It'd be yeah. real nice to just get a nice car and then hang on to it to. Bequeath to your son and your oh, daughter. Yeah. That'd be neat. Where's that CRV at? Where's old, where's old Faithful? <laughs> oh, man, old Keep Faithful. Keep that thing driving and be like, this was my first and my brother's first and my other brother's first, and it's now yours. <laughs> Take yeah. care of it. It does have 450,000 miles on it, so <laughs> yeah. good luck with it that. Has, if you wreck Tommy. it, I'll kill you. It, has it doesn't matter. You can't wreck it. If you wreck it, I'll just duct tape it together. It's a Honda <laughs> CRV. It doesn't break. It has <laughs> one million miles on it. I'm pretty sure that at this point, it's one of those ones where yeah. the, in the instruction manual, oil is listed as optional. Yeah, that's one of those. <laughs> I want to say that what it what is it, is it thirty years that a car becomes like an antique vehicle? That was twenty something. Twenty something. Yeah. Dang. I, I thought we were really close to this. Next year, year. Because oh one, yeah, I think we were like. If really it's close. twenty years, then Ooh. that think then that then old faithful is gonna be an antique vehicle. I think twenty or twenty five was. It? I'm gonna Google it real quick. Yeah, yeah. Go ahead. <laughs> go ahead. Ow, my finger stuck in my. There we go. Let's fact check it for a second because that'd be interesting. Yeah, let me see. I have to look up this state too though because it's probably different per state. You know. What's your favorite part of the movie, Dylan? Yeah, still in. When everybody finally opens up about all their bullshit. Yeah, oh, yeah. the barriers come down. That's a good part. It's a really good circle. That is that is like the climax of the movie. Yeah, it feels Seeing like the progression it. of it for yeah, the yeah. most part. Everybody comes in with their metaphorical barriers up. Mm-hmm. Yeah. You can tell by how much. It almost goes in line with how much clothing they have on. 
as yeah. they lose layers throughout the film. Yeah, it's actually really. I think that's probably intentional. Yeah. I kind of like that. Now that yeah. you mention it, they kind of take off layers of clothing because it just keeps getting hotter, and then it, it kind of. Mm-hmm. That's a really good point, and that's again probably mm-hmm. intentional. I like that. Yeah, I didn't notice that. Subliminal messaging. Yes, mm, mm, quite. Yeah, like I, 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 like I really like the point whenever Allison tells Brian his social security number. That yeah. was amazing. <laughs> and he was like, how do you know all that? He was like, I stole your wallet. He said, oh, he, said, you. Like he, said he said, give me it. No, give me it. <laughs> give it to me. <laughs> that was such a confident yeah. no. Yeah. Like, <laughs> oh, gosh. She's all, that's like, every character is so unique. It's hard to pick one. They're all but great. It, like I said, there is a certain subtext that, that each character does very well. And again, for those who may not know out there in the world subtext i think is what i, I was always told in acting class and a lot of like filming stuff like that hold on a second oh. is uh um is when it's the emotion that you wear on your face and it's the emotion that you can show the camera without saying anything and there are a couple characters that do that very I, every character really does sure it the whole well. whole cast the whole movie does it very but well. there's a car, there's a couple well moments versed, in fact there's a couple moments where they shoot to claire and Claire has this thing for the bad boy Bender, <laughs> and it's like you can sort of tell just by a few tells that she does that again. Even though he really like reams into her and like really like is aggressive and mean, all that kind of stuff. There's still like this. She still kind of has the hots for him. Yeah. You can, and it. She doesn't say that ever. At no point through like the first like hour of the movie has she ever said that she ever has liked him ever. But you know, as the viewer, you're like. She kind of has the hops for they, him. They try to smash. Yeah. They, she's trying to smash him. I don't yeah, know. What, I don't that know. feels pretty good, don't it? Yeah, don't it. Yeah. Donning it. Down it. Uh, 25 years. An antique motor vehicle Damn. or motorcycle is at least 25 years old in the state of Louisiana. Damn. Interesting. So we're Three years old being antique. hey oh, Nice work, antique boy. Now everyone knows how old I am. Oh. Well, I mean, not... Dang it. <laughs> it's, basic, ba- it's basic math, John. It's basic. Uh, it's, I don't think it's, it's basic simple math. Edition. <laughs> it's a simple edition. It's a simple edition. It's a simple Where did that lisp come from? I didn't grow up with that. Hey. What's that? I said, where the fuck did that lisp come from? I didn't grow up with that. You found know. it. We oh, had a we had a, we had a buddy of ours that... Uh, we cannot develop lisp. Yeah. It's too late for you. <laughs> we had a friend that came up with that character, and it just has kind of stuck around. Oh, yeah. It's Gibby. Yes, yes, indeed. What well, yeah, Patrick Gowen? It, it was an excellent movie. Really it was a great. It. I really enjoyed it. Watch it again. I would watch it again. Mega Probably favorite. I gave it a big four. Um, and uh, better be out of one. <laughs> <laughs> it was a big four. You know, out, yeah. out of four. Eh, so um, I would give it a big thumbs up, though. If anybody wants to see a good, uh, just a, a solid and a half movie, just and also like if you're in the right headspace a movie that you can probably really cry to. Mm-hmm. I wasn't in that headspace for that movie, but there was a few moments where I was like, ooh, man, if I... It always gets me close. If if I was, if there was ever a moment where I felt like I wanted a good cry, there's a couple moments in that, that one scene we keep talking about where, like, the climax of the movie happens where it's like, ooh, mm-hmm. you're hitting on some heartstrings. Because, again, it's also... You, like, like, like Dylan had said before, you kind of see the, the walls slowly kind of come down these characters and... Yeah, you really they walk in flawed. And yes, they come out better for it. Yes, yes, indeed. Adversity so this, builds. This character. movie was uh, <laughs> mailed to me. So people have told me that this is a good movie for a long time. Plenty of people, and one person got fed up with me saying that there, she was like, "Have you seen this movie?" And I was like, "No." She's like, "How about this one?" And again, as usual, the list goes on of movies that I haven't seen that I need to. That's why we called Dylan the cultured one and me not. So, um, <laughs> so. Eventually, she was like, all right, well, uh, it's too late. I'm mailing you The Breakfast Club. And I was like, oh, wait, wait, really? She was like, yep, what's your address? So I was like, okay, whatever. So she mailed the movie to me uh, and told me I could keep it. So <laughs> special nice special thanks to <laughs> special thanks to a friend that kind of was the... As if everyone else wasn't trying to sell me on watching this movie, <laughs> I was literally mailed it to my address, so I knew that I had to watch it. You're there welcome. There was no excuse. Oh, yes. So real MVP right? of tonight. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, next, though. 
Monty yeah, Python, we can go Monty Monty Python, Python and the Holy Grail. Is that gonna be the next one? Yeah. yeah. Oh yes. Monty Python and the Holy Grail. I've heard that, that is still get t- on t- with t- it. I've heard that that is still to this day the best comedy ever. It's it's some, it's some, way up there, yeah. man. Some people still think so. Now you guys have both seen it, but I haven't. Yeah. And you guys, neither of you have talked about the podcast yet. Have you? I have not. Okay, so then we can. You guys can still share your opinion. You just get a second wash through, but I haven't yes. seen it. Yet. I it's I'm not going to say anything because I don't want to spoil anything mm-hmm. for we'll you. Stay under wraps but until we I will say, it. it was. It's a, it's, it is a classic, and it is funny enough that I want to get a sec. I want to get a second watch through of it. Mm-hmm. Hell yeah! Yeah, so it's I will say it, it deserves that if nothing else. Oh, for sure. Um, and of course, it, m- movies like that don't get to get to that level of power and yeah. not be even half decent. You know what I'm saying? Uh-huh. Like, so it's it's pretty good. But right. Anyways, any other uh, last comments about this movie before we call it a wrap? Beckfist. I am now slightly less sad. Yeah. <laughs> it's always yeah. nice to get it out. Good job. Get it out. It's always nice to remind you that you have a heart and that you can feel, you know? You watch a movie and you're I like, I just forget oh. sometimes. And there is still no, in no, that no, I'm not saying you forget, but you just have those moments where you get caught up in life and things happen. And you just got to, like, sit down and realize, like, man, life is sad. <laughs> life is sad sometimes. Bullshit's clinging to you and then you don't have time for it anymore, so it just stays there. Exactly. Big mood. But yeah. Well, it was a lot of got, fun. Got finals tomorrow, so... Studying your butt off. Nope, going to sleep. That's what I'm doing. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I'll study. I'll, yeah. stu- I'll cram before the. I'll final. study when I'm dead. I mean, I mean, uh, something uh, like that's that. Not how that works. <laughs> I'll sleep when I'm studying. I mean, I'll, I'll die when I study. Yeah, I don't. I'll, I'll study when I'm having a strong <laughs> <laughs> help. Um, but yeah, uh, I think that's uh, I think that's all we want to get into. A short podcast today. Yeah, exactly. We yeah, don't care. Uh, oh, oh, I, ha- I have something that I want to talk about on the podcast. Just mm-hmm. probably we have a few more minutes left. Um, that I can say this. Um, Dylan showed me a Gundam anime. Gundam show. <sighs> is it called an, Is that called an OVA? Or is yeah, it? it's okay. one of the OVAs. So it's technically an OVA. And you know how, Ethan, you say that... Robots. Um, you do say, you say that too. But you say how... <laughs> Indeed. You say that Die Hard and... Die Harry, Hard is a Christmas movie. Harry Potter... Is it a Christmas movie? Harry Potter is, is a new one that I've added to my list yes. just to frustrate it's people. It's Christmas adjacent. Because it, it doesn't count. Yes. Die Hard is a Christmas movie. Harry Potter is a Christmas adjacent movie. And I Purely watched, because there's Christmas scenes and purely yes. because I've watched them during Christmas. And I, So they both count. And, and Dylan had shown me this Gundam. Is there a Christmas Gundam? There I is see. a Christmas Gundam. <laughs> I see your Die Hard and Harry Potter and raise you Gundam 0080 War in the Pocket. <laughs> dude, war, war in Christmas's pocket. Let's no. go, war, dude. War in Santa's ho, ho, pocket. Ho, <laughs> hamburger, hamburger. I don't oh no, man! Oh, I forgot. this is the one that you said I would get because you said hamburger. Yes. You said this was the one that was sad. Oh, oh, hold on to that. This is the one. This is the one that was sad that you said like it was a child. You mentioned this one already. Yeah. Yes, you will oh, see. Yeah, hurt. you said hamburger and it was sad, and I was like, okay, cool, yeah, big sad. <laughs> so I'm ready. But first, we have to watch the other one though. Why'd you oh. have to do that, dude? It's all oh, right. That hurts. He doesn't know yet. So. I um, know he doesn't know it, but okay. I know. <laughs> exactly. So shut up. That's because I don't know yet. <laughs> so, I carry that weight and it hurts. <laughs> yeah. So um, it's, we have to watch the other one. Ha- though, ha- first. You the, o- the other Mobile Fighter G. Yeah, we have to watch that one there's first. Because he mentioned course. that Mobile Fighter G is like the best. So there's I need to watch th- probably watch that one first. Maybe. Hold not. on. There's six episodes in War in the Pocket. Yes. So there's six of them. And I wager that four of them are Christmas themed. <laughs> <laughs> Which there was a point. Amen. You <laughs> preaching to me, man. Let's there was go. A point, there was a point where we so got. We should wait till Christmas time. We, I had eggnog with this. <laughs> we got. Oh, we God. got to episode three, and they introduced Christmas stuff, and I was like, "Oh, that's interesting." Then we got to episode four, and I was like, "Wait a minute." I since a theme here, and then episode five. Yes. And then we got to the last episode, and they're like, "It's Christmas Day, and all hell's breaking loose." And I was like, "This is a Christmas Gundam." <laughs> <laughs> Do they even celebrate Christmas in Japan, or did they just like? Yeah. It's not. Know. It's Listen. in. Hey, it's not in Japan. It's in space. Oh yeah, I forgot. In space, Japan. Yes. <laughs> yes. Because look, I don't know, man. I was born, and raised in America, man. Some people do things different. <laughs> You're right, but Holidays they had a full multinational. They had a, a full. Uh, Some of them are. Yeah. A full parade. A whole full. Hell yeah. A whole ass Santa. Well, was we'll there. be watching that closer to Christmas. We'll be watching that. I'll get around yes. to everybody. Yeah, yeah. I want to um, watch it again. Hamburger or I something wanna, like that. Oh god. So you wanted to make um, it a Christmas uh, tradition. Uh, don't. I do. Yes, Christmas tradition. Yeah, of course. I love traditions. <laughs> <laughs> I said we should. He, I, I get very visceral about the Christmas holiday because it's the <laughs> only time that I feel happy <laughs> after. <laughs> Damn, dude. That's after fucking w- sad. <laughs> I mean, 
<laughs> Dylan's face was priceless when I said that. After we, <laughs> after we finished watching it, I was like, you know what we should do, Dylan? He's like, what's that? And I was like, we should... We should start a new tradition, and we should snuggle up and get real comfortable. No snuggling involved. And, and, and I was like, no, no I'm talking snuggling about involved. Sn- snuggling <laughs> by ourselves, you know, together. Six feet apart. <laughs> so, yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> yes, exactly. Or it's five and, feet apart. And, and so we, we, you know, start a tradition where we watch War in the Pocket and cry for Christmas. You know, that's just a thing we should do. And he he busts out laughing. He's like, yes, let's do that. So. Yep. I just set in stone. I have now. I forgot about that, and then I know that I kind of tagged that on the last minute here. But I wanted to talk about that while we were all here. This is the first time we had a <laughs> yeah. chance to, in the past few episodes. But just so that way it's on record, we I want to watch that. It may be a little while before we do. But again, yeah. it's that, it's one of the things on the list for sure, and I will watch it when Christmas comes closer. Yes, yes. because it's one of the two series, Mobile Fighter G. Yes, is that correct. Okay, cool. I'll make sure that's right. Uh-huh. Mobile Fighter G and that one. That he that Dylan was like, we need to watch those two. One of them is really sad, and one of them is like regarded as the best. And yeah. I was like, okay, <laughs> uh, can you tell me how you described? Actually, I'm gonna try and say how you described it. So we were watching the different intros, and he was like, which one do you think you would like? And we were talking about this one that seemed cool, that one seemed cool, different series of, of of the Gundam series. And we got to Mobile Fighter G, and he was like, this one's really great. And I was like, what's well, what's the difference between this one? He was like, it's a little different than other Gundam in the way that the suits work and everything, but. <laughs> It's um it basically there's this competition and like every um Sega every continent yeah right country, or e- every yes. country has like a, they have a, an arena where like they basically fight in this kind of competition. The to arena see who, is the Earth. The yeah. arena is Earth to see which country is allowed to control the Earth by winning this competition. Yeah. And I was like, that sounds awesome. Does America win? J- Japan can't make America win. And he was like, t- and he said, and I quote, technically there are no winners because they find out there's a bad guy. And they all join together to form a kind of Power Rangers force. <laughs> and I said, <laughs> I said, Space Gundam Power Rangers. <laughs> and uh, can't wait to watch that yeah. <laughs> anyways so good. we'll uh, we'll save that for so later excited. so bad good I'm so excited <laughs> anyways so i appreciate everyone for listening and tuning in at this uh, episode um what you hear is what you get what this was what a, you get. i really enjoyed this movie and i can't wait for us to watch monty python that's going to be really good <laughs> and then we also on the next episode when we watch monty python and we have that whole thing i want to put on the notes for that episode we need to talk about the next movies that we're going to watch so yeah. that we have another, like, two or three we have kind of re- loaded in the chamber ready to go. I'm going to ask so some have people who have uh, been known to call me uncultured for not yes. watching movies. I'm going to ask them but for uh, ob- options. Exactly. And also, Dylan, if you just have any, because there's been so many movies that I've never watched, like the Alien movies. They're, yeah, like, good. All you got to do is just go in my room and look in yeah. my drawers. Well, I know, but there's been a few that you've said are, cla- like Anyways, I said, like the Alien movies. We're running a low on time, so... so. Thank you all for watching. Uh, we all really Listen. appreciate it. And if you're looking for uh, ways that you can get connected with all of us, uh, all of our links are in my link tree that I have. You can also find us on Spotify and uh, Apple Podcasts and Google Podcasts and all that nonsense at The Aftermath. Um, until next time, guys. We will return. We'll rule the day. With more movies. Bye-bye. Bye.